Dan, you're a neighbor, you're awesome, you're my friend. Give him a huge round of applause, the biggest one for any speaker, Dan Kaminsky. Okay, is this mic working now? Yeah. Excellent. All right, so we're going to talk about something that's like sucked since 2002 and turns out it doesn't like fix itself or anything. <laughs> we're going to talk about uh, PKI, public key infrastructure. Um, how did I get playing with this? Well, it's about my 10th year doing uh, research talks into fundamental design of the internet. So I've been looking at SSH and DNS and TCP IP and DNS and web browsers and anyway. I was pretty sure there'd be nothing to do with DNS in here. Not that I wasn't wrong, but... Uh, <laughs> so, uh, here's the deal. We right now, on the internet, have crap for security. And you all know it's true. The number one reason, in fact, according to statistics, for all the elite O'Day attacks that we all find and all look into and all hear about, 61% of actual compromises in the field just come from passwords, from no passwords, from default passwords, from shared passwords, from my passwords. <laughs> I, <laughs> you could not design a technology that has blown up more in our face if you tried. So why do we keep using them? Well, they have this nasty little habit of working. Passwords are used because they scale well when you just have a small number. The human memory has a capacity. It can remember these things, and a few of them, and so people will use them. Where you get into problems are when you have lots of things you need to authenticate to and lots of passwords to use because then the human memory starts to fail. Now there are two schools of thought about what we do about passwords. The first school of thought says let's at least make it so when you break someone loses one password it doesn't affect their other 30 servers. And the only way we can do this is if we either machine generate passwords or at least make passwords that look like they were machine generated. So you get like leet speak as a security technology. I'm just gonna say the bad guys have totally figured out there's a relationship between S and dollar sign. They got it. So, this doesn't work very well. What we should be able to do instead is we should be able to get humans out of the memory business entirely. We should be able to have little pieces of hardware that actually do asymmetric key exchange, you know, really interesting RSA and DSA technology. You know, this should work. You know, we, we have this, we've been building terabytes of hard drives and passwords are what? Like, a couple bytes? Like, come on, we should be able to automate this. Um, and what we were supposed to have, and what the vision of the future as of the end of the 90s, also known as the era we didn't know anything about security, what we thought we were building at the end of the 90s was systems for doing smart cards, where you don't type in a password, you just type in a little, maybe a PIN number, a four-digit number, into your little card, and your card does all the authentication magic. And the underlying technology that was supposed to make this work was supposed to be something by the name of X.509. <laughs> so I have to apologize. I am blatantly committing copyright theft here by including this in my presentation. I did include the signature. And here's why. This, right here, is internet security at the end of 2009. If we only cared enough, we could totally ride this pony. 
<laughs> so let's talk about reality for a second. Um, everybody loves blaming the business guys for why we don't have certificates and smart cards and this and that. We basically say the reason we don't have good security is business just doesn't care enough. You know? Business has invested hundreds of millions of dollars in this crap over the course of the last decade. Something doesn't work. And what I tell you that something is, it's not business rules, it's we screwed up the engineering. X509 has something wrong with it. So this shouldn't come as a surprise. We have learned a ton about security real-world security in the last decade, but none of that knowledge is really baked into X509. It couldn't be. We finished that 10 years ago. We actually are right at the edge of being able to start over from scratch. DNSSEC, a technology which, as of a year ago, I thought was totally worthless, turns out actually does a lot of things better. It is a superior foundation. It is ultimately right in all the ways that X509 is wrong. I'm gonna explain now what I mean by that. Um, before I go into that, I do wanna point something out. We have been doing a lot of things wrong. There are those who say, well, if we've been doing things wrong, clearly this means we need to start over with like a totally new internet, and this one will be secure. Bullshit. Not how the world works. It's like saying we're going to have a city with none of the old problems of old cities. We're going to have like all new ro widths of roads and heights of bridges and everything will be great. And we'll stick it in the middle of a forest with no roads or flights coming in or out and it'll work great. No, it won't because it won't be connected to anything. The reality is, is that migrating yourself from an insecure state to a secure state does not go through the path of absolutely starting from scratch. It goes through the path of taking individual components and migrating them over and exploring the network effects of that change without saying, hey, let's do a new internet. Yeah, that's, sorry guys, you're, you're just trying to get a whole bunch of funding. We, you know it and we know it. So let's talk about X509 again. Um, X509 is the identity system behind PKI. It's used in SSL, it's used in IPsec, uh, it's used in pretty much everything except for SSH, and some SSH implementations will use X509 as well. The best way to understand this technology is to think of it like the passport system. Look, I'm an American and I'm out here in Germany. Germany as a country has no clue who Dan Kaminsky is, but it does know who the United States of America is. So Germany as a country gets an assertion from the United States of America saying, the person with this face has this name according to the United States of America. This is roughly what is going on with the certificate. You get an assertion that the person with this key material is this website name according to VeriSign. It really is nothing more complicated than digital passports. So in the real world, X509 has only one scenario where it has actually worked. I'm sorry if you're an actual X509 engineer, it's true. The only thing that's actually worked at any sense of scale has been SSL. And that's mainly been because the user interface actually pops up all kinds of alarms. Um, SSL is a technology used to secure the web, secure specifically HTTPS, for various definitions of secure. Um, this is a miracle that happened in the late 90s. The late 90s, people realized this internet thing could totally make us money if only people would put their credit card numbers on the internet. Now, how do we make it so that the geeks don't scream bloody murder. And by a historical quirk, the geeks had figured out enough of crypto to say, if you do actual good crypto,